that's working. Buongiorno a tutti. <laughs> so, last presentation, really excited for this one. So, my name is Hugo Souza. I'm, I'm from Porto, uh, Faculty of Science. I'm also with the, uh, the laboratory from Inesc Tech. Um, and today I came here to you to speak about temporal relation extraction. And you might raise the question, what is temporal relation extraction? To that I answer, great question. <laughs> so with the... Uh, uh, uh. Uh, you have to move this, it's sorry, because it, it went in. Oh, okay, perfect. Perfect. Okay, so with the lessons learned from the Wolf of Fall Street, uh, I will start the, the context by showing you the problem. So imagine that you have a question answering, a question and answering system, and you start to ask, asking him uh, temporally questions. What do I mean by that? So let's look at this example. Um, what you see here is the Hugging Face API, and I'm giving it a context. The University of Padua was founded in 1222, while the University of, of Porto was founded 110 years ago. And what I do is I ask to the system, what is the oldest university? And yeah, it, it answers it quite correctly, right? But if you notice it, the, the confidence of the model is actually pretty low. So what happens if I ask it, what is the youngest university? Okay, something is wrong. So in here, I would say that the model is not temporarily, not temporarily <laughs> sorry, aware. And I start exploring it. So in what year was the University of Porto founded? And you see that the model has no way is it, what, uh, of identifying the age of the University of Porto. So that's the motivation behind the, the, my talk. So what can we do? So we have this starting context, right? And it would be nice if, for instance, we start by detecting the temporal expressions. Well, just knowing, for instance, what 1222, it's good enough, but 100 years ago doesn't tell much to the system. So we need to anchor it to the document creation time. And now we know that uh, University of Porto was founded in 1911. Then we can annotate what we typically call events, which are typically verbs, actions, uh, or something like that. In this case, we can annotate two of them, founded. Then we can annotate the temporal links. And what I mean by temporal links is associate events with events, events with temporal expressions, or events with document creation time. With this information, I could place, uh, create a timeline based on my context, which I then could feed together with my uh, question answering system. And it be, would be, maybe it would be uh, more intelligent in the way of processing time. So I must admit, these ideas are not mine. I was not the first to identify this problem. This started in 2022 with the Terkus workshop, um, which united a, a group of researchers that was really that were really interested at the time at answering uh, question answering temporal uh, aware questions, and they created a, um, a data set. This data set is called Time Bank. It has 183 documents. Um, all of them are news, and the temporal links have 13 different classes, after, before, include, is included, etc. That gives a total of 500 and 100, uh, uh, 5,121 temporal relations. So we have this data set. Why not make a competition out of it? And that's what was made. In 2007, there was the first competition to, to deploy models that to cl correctly classify the temporal relations. The task was divided in three different categories, um, exp events, temporal expressions, events, document creation time, and event event. And the numbers that you see in there are the F1 uh, scores of the model. You can see they, for a first time, is not bad. 
uh, event uh, and document uh, creation time relations were the best, but they are also the fewest. So the models were not that good. So let's do it again. Then we evolved to um, data set was updated, a little bit more languages, but the performance of the models more or less the same. Then we evolved three, 2013. Uh, at this time, data set was increased a lot um, by uh, uh, almost double the amount of documents. And this time, the, the task was not divided in three different tasks. It was all together. And you can see that you have a F1 score of 56. Hmm, it's still not great. And they also tried it to, besides classifying, identifying what links should be uh, classified. And you can see the performance goes really, really bad. So at this point in time, the, the community starts asking, is it because of the data? And time bank dance is born. Time bank dance as comes from the idea that the original time bank didn't really uh, link all the, all the temporal relations. So it was incomplete. Therefore, we should create a more complete data set. Then matrix came, came by. And this data set uh, tries, reduces the amount of, um, of temporal links and actually just annotates the, the relation between the starting points of two events. So a simplification. And then TD discourse, which the argument is, um, neither of the previous data sets um, was able to do a discourse level relation between the, the events. So a lot of new data sets, did, did the model's performance improve? Not really. And this is these are uh, after the advent of uh, natural language processing, uh, word embeddings, transformers, the models still can perform. And these are the big problem behind my thesis and why, why I have work and I win money. <laughs> so I came here to present you some of the ideas that I have and I will explore um, to later see your thoughts on it. So the first idea is transform the interval relations to point relations. So the first the data set time bank, 13 relations, a lot of relations, most of them are underrepresented. So instead of saying that you, for instance, if you have event A and B and A overlaps B, you can segment this relation in four point relations. So you can say that the start of point A happens before the start of point B, of, of interval B, et cetera, or event B, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And in this framework, you only have three labels actually, which is uh, before, after, and equals. So uh, a reduction. Second idea, frame this uh, problem as a reinforcement learning problem. So what is the, the rationale behind this? So if you have um, a pair of relations, A overlaps B and B overlaps C, you can infer multiple relations between A and C. So in here you have the example of that the information is incomplete. So for instance, if we try to compute a temporal closure, which is uh, in, a go in a document, if we have the relations, uh, then annotate the relations and you try to extend them via inference, you not always get just one relation between the, the, the pair of events. So in the deep learning model, you would just be feeding uh, mixed signals to the model, not pretty good, but on the reinforcement learning, we can play with rewards and reward the model for the three relations. Why not? The third and last, because I'm running out of time, <laughs> is graph neural networks. Graph, graph neural networks recently have shown a great performance in any graph structure problem. And this is uh, one of them. So these were basically my ideas about it. I look forward to, to see if you have another one. Uh, that's it. Any quick questions? We have a couple of minutes before the closing session. I, I see one thing in the chat. Does anyone here have something? Oh, sorry. Okay. Or in, in the meantime, I want to ask you a, a, just a curiosity. I'm not sure if it's very it's hard to, to operate. Let me just. This is part of your uh, your work. So. 
in, in the example that you showed where uh, the system says exactly the same thing or shows exactly the same answer, would it be possible to, let's say, think about something interactive where the system uh, recalls what the system has already said in the past. So I, I'm, I'm not showing the same thing because I've already showed you. So you should have some information already. So for example, you, you ask, well, what's the oldest university? I give you an answer. Yes. Then you ask for what's the youngest university? I'm not showing the same thing because the system knows that now you have some partial information about that. And so it's just changing the things that I show you. Okay, but at the same time, you don't know what is the correct one, right? Yes, exactly. So you, you might be getting it wrong out of, in this case, it's simple because I only gave him two, two possibilities, Porto or Padua. Mm -hmm, yes. But if you have multiple instances, I mean, you, you don't have that flexibility, yeah. right? Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. It was just on top of my on top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. Just one comment in general, if you're going to plan to add provenance for these models, because you want to explain temporally why something was earlier than something else. So instead of like just predicting, you want to, you want to uh, explain back to the presentation yesterday, why a particular event occurred before or after or during. I think that could be something interesting you want to add. Yes, for sure. So the idea of uh, classifying a temporal relation it's good because usually we can't understand we can understand what what the model is saying but yeah for sure something to take a look at two quick uh, questions from laura and david laura maybe david can go first mine is a little a little more off topic david please go first um thanks laura uh, i was just going to ask do you see any um any place for categorizing the types of events going on. Uh, for example, if you're thinking of something like the, the Renaissance, that probably has a wider time range than something like a battle, thinking about this sort of graph structure that you were talking about as your third piece. Yes, so, so the idea is that if you can identify the start and end uh, relation uh, in, in, of an event, you can you can have that information but in here uh, in this framework which was proposed uh, in 2002 the 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 events are normally actions so uh, thought uh, bought uh, something like that which are more like instances than uh, uh, stuff like that oh okay they're not like historical pieces they're more like specific I slice of time yes 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 Gotcha. Thank you. Thank you. So my my question was a little bit um, getting at adding relevance to your to your work and what you what you think about this. And this is sort of like related to some work that I did or tried to do with just untemporal, just general relation extraction and making it useful for information retrieval. Now it seems like temporal relation extraction sort of like exacerbates some of the problems where even if you have some text and you extract some relations from it, you don't know which of these relations were actually relevant to meet the user information need. Do you have like some thoughts or some speculation on that? Like how to bring in uh, like a weighting of which of these extractions are now really relevant to answer something? Yes, Go, going back to the first talk of, of the desires, I, I think it was Jimmy that said, catch them all, right? <laughs> so the idea is if we catch all the temporal relations and all the, the actions, um, we can place the, the events from a, a in the timeline. And that's that's the main goal. You, it, it, that, that answers your question. I, I, was, I was allowed a quick question and I feel you would now turn into a longer discussion. I will probably shoot you an email, okay? <laughs> Okay, yeah. Okay, so thank you very much, Hugo. Let's thank you. Uh